We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to the Pentecostal Apocalypse. And I'm Gary Bailey, and this is uh, uh, my guest today, Pastor Cynthia Egbert, Edwards. Eggers. Eggers. Yeah, you know what? I was on the way here, and uh, uh, on the radio or something came over one of the intercoms uh, at the airport, uh, Cynthia Edwards. So I don't know, I had that on my mind. But yeah, Cynthia Eggers, and she pastors uh, Faith Tabernacle here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're in New Mexico, and uh, it's a little bit warm here today. Uh, but we're uh, just going to have a few sessions here together, chat a bit, and I'm excited about our time together. And I want to mention again, this is... Uh, our show, uh, our, our little uh, uh, YouTube show is called The Pentecostal Apocalypse. You say, well, what does that mean? Apocalypse means revelation. And uh, we are living in the last days, and these are days of, of revelation. These are days, and also days of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Peter said on the day of Pentecost that uh, it would come to pass in the last days, quoting the prophet Joel, that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, I'll pour out of my spirit. So these are the days in which we're living. These are exciting times and days. Uh, I really believe we're living in Bible days, don't you think, Pastor? Amen, I do too. And you can see the signs and the wonders that are coming yeah. in this generation. And I believe we're the generation that'll see Jesus come back. Oh, no question about it. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is found in the book of Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter three, I believe it is. But it says, the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. And so for the church, I believe things are getting better. I believe we're gonna see uh, a great outpouring uh, in the earth. I believe there'll be multitudes come to Jesus Christ in these last days. Uh, but uh, as for the world, uh, things are, are definitely going to wax wor worse and worse, uh, at least in my view of things. And, and I, I don't think you have to look very far to see that things are uh, definitely in an upheaval in the world. So Yes, yes. Uh, but in the church, praise God, we can expect good things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Pastor Cynthia, um, you've had a lot of things, uh, you've been in the ministry a number of years uh, uh, with your husband uh, early on. He passed away a few years back, has it been five years now? Three. Three years now. And so you you found yourself pastor in a church as a woman pastor and, and doing a great job. I, I, uh, I love coming here, I love being a part of the, uh, of the church and just being a help where we can. and, and uh, but uh, maybe you'd like to just tell a little bit about your ministry and what, uh, you know, what God's doing with you and, and well, what's happening. You know, we, uh, you had mentioned earlier, what is it like to be a woman as a pastor? And of course, I didn't go out and ask for this job. Yeah. God just, it was there and the officials came and asked me if I wouldn't just continue. And, and there has to be definitely that call in the Lord. And, uh, for now, officials, you, you are part of a, yes. of a Pentecostal group denomination, yes. Pentecostal yes. Church of God. That's correct. A wonderful group and uh, has numbers of churches around the United States, mostly here in the West. Is that... Uh, no, throughout the United it's States. It's throughout the United States. And overseas. Okay. Yeah, yes. praise God. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, we are. So, I think uh, one thing about a woman being in ministry is that she does... Uh, I stay in submission to those that are over me. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. But then the favor of God is there. Yeah. You know, God puts his favor on you and, and he makes things, uh, he makes up the difference. You know, he gives you favor with people that you need favor with and, and he's so faithful to yeah. just take care of what needs to be taken care of. And of course we know that there's, in Christ there's not male or female or Jew or Gentile that we're, and the Holy Spirit moves through us, but. Uh, I was just thinking of that scripture, you know, yes, God, God yes. God doesn't call men or women, he calls spirits. He yes. calls spirits that are full of the Holy Ghost and, right. and yielded, consecrated, That's ready right. to be used by him. And whether, uh, whatever your gender is or background, God can use you as a leader. That's right, that's right. And, and he does and he's faithful. And um, 
I think that there is a lot more receptivity to a woman being a pastor than say maybe there was many, many years ago. Yeah. I yeah. think there's a lot more um, people that are open to that. Well, there's some great examples of women that have gone before you. You know, one of my favorite stories I shared with our girls, I have four daughters. And uh, when we were little, when they were little, uh, I read them the story of Joan of Arc and how a little teenage girl basically uh, was a catalyst that ended the war between uh, France and England that had gone on for a hundred years. Uh, but God spoke to this little girl and used her and she led armies into battle and uh, uh, they, you know, they, at the time they didn't understand uh, much about her. They ended up, uh, she ended up being a martyr, but uh, uh, today the Catholic Church recognizes her as a, as a saint and, and a real leader in, in the church. And so uh, uh, praise God for women leaders. And then I think of women like uh, Maria Woodworth Eder, you know, uh, an early Pentecostal and uh, had such hardship in her life, uh, but loved the Lord with all her heart. And, and uh, I quote, I love to quote about her. She, she, you know, she finally agreed to go and, you know, she knew she was a woman. She knew that, you know, we're talking about the late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, she knew it was going to be difficult because women weren't readily and widely received. But, but she finally agreed. She said, Lord, I'll go, but where shall I go? I love this quote. She said, and the Lord spoke to her and said, go here, go there, wherever <laughs> souls are perishing. And, uh, beautiful. and God beautiful. just used her in such an amazing way. Uh, the power of God would hit her. And she would remain in a, in a uh, trance-like state uh, for hours at a time, just frozen in a position. Uh, I've heard that, uh, you know, it even went on several days at a time. But, but people, when she'd bring her camp meeting and tent to, to an area, people within a mile radius were convicted of sin. And, and uh, you know, I think... Uh, it was amazing. It was, it was. Wasn't she the one that people would be slain in the spirit or under the power of God and they'd bring them and she'd pray for them to be released? Yeah, and I, I believe so. And people that had been critical of her. And yeah. How God just did that, yeah. It was uh, just used her in a mighty way. So really, God was so powerful in her life. Uh, the gender thing wasn't even an issue at some point. I mean, people might have fussed about that, but... Once they experience the power of God That's true. in her meetings, and, and I, think, I think of those type of things going on, I think, wow, we need a revival today. And, and you know, uh, Pastor Cynthia, let God use a man, let him use a woman, let him use a child, use whoever you want. Let's just see that kind of power. That, that's right, that's right. Uh, flow in our midst. That's so. right. I, I think of Daisy Osborne. Yeah, oh yeah. My. And how God used her, and some churches wouldn't let her preach here, but boy, they'd let her go over there, and look what they did. Yeah. Oh, now, was she involved with your Pentecostal uh, you ministry? Know, the T.L. Osborne was involved somehow way back there. I don't quite have the connection, but I know there was a connection there. Okay. Yeah. You got Daisy Osborne, and then you got another wonderful lady, and, and a lot of times uh, these ministries surrounded in controversy, but still powerful, powerful ministries, and. Uh, um, Amy Simple McPherson. Oh yes, uh-huh. uh And she founded Angelus Temple in Los Angeles, and uh, just a phenomenal woman of God. Yes, How yes. God used her and, and yes. moved through her in a mighty way. And I just think it's saying yes to what God has, and you're right when the Spirit of the Lord shows up, and and God begins to move sovereignly. Yeah. Then people are just. Their, their hearts are melted and they'll just come to Jesus and sure. be saved and healed. And like you said, then the gender is, is no longer important. That's not an issue anymore. And, and, that's, right. uh, and that's what people want. That's what I want. That's what you want. We want to come in contact with the living God and, and whoever God uses, however he uses anyone, male or female or uh, young or old, uh, God wants to touch humanity. And I think you know another woman we can speak of is uh, uh, Catherine Coleman, yes. who was mightily used yes, of God. Yes, she was. Uh, I was never in any of her meetings, but I remember growing up in the '70s and that she was um, a very popular speaker. And of course, I grew up in a and more of a 
uh, a denominational non-Pentecostal church and group, so I wasn't exposed a lot to these uh, types of ministries, but, uh, but I sure, certainly have a great respect for, uh, for Catherine and her ministry and what God did through her. And um, We're about done here, but maybe in our next session we'll maybe talk about some women today that God are, uh, God's using because he's still using yes, he is. Uh, yes, men he and is. women of God and especially women and uh, yes, uh, pastor, pastor in churches, leading ministries and, and numbers of things. But, but uh, you know, if you feel called to the ministry out there and you don't fit the mold that your denomination lays out for you or your, uh, um, your family or group that you're involved in, just understand God... If that calling is on your heart, God can use you if you are willing and available to be used. So, uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this we time together. And we thank you that in these last days, you're pouring out your the spirit king. on men and we on women. And, Lord, we thank you for these comes. things in Jesus' mighty name. He's coming Amen. in power. Amen. Hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes.